Okay. The meeting is now being recorded. I'm going to turn it over to Dennis Haney, who's a community health consultant with Iowans Fit for Life. And he's presenting for us today policy systems and environment, environmental change and what we need to know. So I'll let Dennis take it over. Great. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Um, well, as Sarah said, I am Dennis Haney, and I work with the Iowans Fit for Life initiative, uh, which is housed at the Iowa Department of Public Health. And I recognize many of the names on the participant list. And, uh, so many of you are very familiar uh, both with Iowans Fit for Life and, of course, with the Iowa Cancer Consortium. Um, through my role here at Iowans Fit for Life, I'm also an active Iowa Cancer Consortium member. And uh, I think we've had a very positive uh, partnership between Iowans Fit for Life and the Iowa Cancer Consortium. Um, just as a little um, uh, introduction, our, the perspective that I'm presenting from today with policy systems and environmental change is from a practical use perspective. So less so from an academic or expertise area, um, but rather um, from having used policy systems and environmental change through our work at Iowans Fit for Life over the last several years. Um, so just so you understand the, the perspective from which I'm presenting. So of course, uh, since this is an Iowa Cancer Consortium uh, webinar, it is definitely worth repeating what the Iowa Cancer Consortium mission is. And so at ICC, our mission is to reduce the cancer incidence and mortality in Iowa, and doing that through collaborative efforts that provide services and programs directed towards comprehensive cancer prevention and control. So uh, I'm assuming that uh, most, if not all of you, work in um, some sort of work with cancer prevention, treatment, um, quality of life, uh, uh, in, in some manner and are here uh, to learn more about policy systems, environmental change, and how that may impact uh, your work in the cancer arena. Additionally, um, just briefly to talk about the Iowans Fit for Life mission, um, our mission at Iowans Fit for Life is to develop and strengthen partnerships that prevent and reduce the prevalence of obesity in the state. And really the, the reason I share those two missions is um, that though they are written very differently, there is a tremendous amount of overlap between what we do. And prevention is a very strong link between Iowa Cancer Consortium and Iowans Fit for Life, and where our work has overlapped and our partnership um, has been very strong in many areas. And the prevention work specifically that Iowans Fit for Life works on is in the areas of nutrition and physical activity, so improving uh, nutrition and physical activity uh, within the state and focusing on prevention of cancer and chronic diseases. So hopefully that lends some insight as far as perspective. So the big question mark. What on earth is policy systems and environmental change? So um, here, uh, Sarah, if you could activate the first poll for us, I would appreciate that. And the first poll is just to get an idea of those of us on the phone today, how familiar each of us are with the concept of policy systems and environmental change. So do we have a fairly good deal uh, or amount of expertise uh, listening in right now, or is this a very introductory concept for many of us? Okay, it looks like we have probably uh, most people who have completed the poll. So um, a small percent of us are not very familiar. So uh, for those of you um, who checked that, hopefully this will be a good introduction to policy systems and environmental change. Um, about a little over half of us are somewhat familiar, so have an idea, and hopefully this can fill in some gaps or at least give some ideas on how we might implement policy systems and environmental change in our work. And about a third of us uh, are very familiar. And so for the third of you that are very familiar, um, don't be shy in filling in gaps on things that perhaps um, I have omitted. All right. So at the risk of being too academic, um, I do want to relate the topic of policy systems and environmental change to a framework called the socio-ecological model. 
And some of you may be aware of the socio-ecological model, or maybe something very new for many of you. But it's simply a model that discusses the way that we go about um, implementing behavior change. So this model, um, it's used to frame the work that we do um, here at Iowa Fit for Life, and I believe has touched on several of the projects in um, the Iowa Cancer Consortium as well. And in this model, you'll see that the individual person is at the center. And um, so the knowing that any behavior change really needs to happen um, at the individual level. Um, that is ultimately where behavior change happens um, uh, for everyone, so at the individual. Uh, following the individual, then, is the interpersonal level. So that includes our family, our friends, and other social networks. So how we interact um, with each other, people that we know personally. Um, above that is the organizational level, which refers to um, organized settings like work, or church, or places that you spend a lot of time at. Beyond that, then, is our community, which uh, community can refer to different types of communities. So that could refer to the town that you live in. Um, if you live in a large city, it may be your specific neighborhood. Um, it may be a network of religious organizations, or to be looked at a little bit differently, it could even be something like an LGBT community. Um, the outer layer, then, is labeled public policy. And public policy is really more inclusive than just policy. It also includes things like systems and environmental change that we'll discuss this afternoon. So um, the, the reason that I show the socio-ecological model and where policy systems and environmental change fits in that is really to reinforce that there are multiple levels that we can work at. Um, but here we're encouraging or discussing how we can work at the policy systems and environmental change level um, and how that impacts the other levels um, as well. So by working at the highest level, policy systems and environmental change, that work um, in most cases will impact many, if not all, of the other levels in the socio-ecological model. So Sarah, if we could do the second poll, this will help us get an idea of what people's understanding of policy is. So what does policy mean to you? When you think of policy, do you automatically think of like a federal or state law? Do you think about policy in your workplace, your employer's rules? Or do you think of something like your own personal rules, like a family policy that you might have? We'll give a moment or two for those answers to come in. OK, so it looks like most of us have answered. So most of us, um, or at least two, around 2 thirds of us, or a little more, uh, typically think of federal or state law. I think that's pretty customary. And um, about between a quarter and a third of us think of policies at work, our employer's rules. So both very common thoughts. Um, one of the things to consider in this question is that there is no wrong answer. So policy can mean different things, and it, um, all of these answers would be correct. So it's really just trying to figure out what it is um, we are thinking when we hear the word policy. So we're going to go through and define um, policy systems and environmental change. And so for this, um, certainly tapped into our trusted resource, um, Webster's.com. And I'm not going to read the policy definition specifically to you. You are all intelligent people and, and can read those quite effectively. Um, but when we think of policy, do we automatically think of the picture in the upper right-hand corner, the, the employer's policy manual, or do we automatically go to state or federal law um, described in the lower picture? Or do we think of something else? So um, an important point here is that a policy can be a federal or state law. And examples could be things like the National Farm Bill, obviously a huge federal law that has a lot of implications um, across the country and certainly in Iowa. It could also be things like um, the cancer trial, um, uh, medication trial legislation, um, or uh, forms of that in, in, uh, across the country or in different states. Um, policy can also include things like a city ordinance. 
So city ordinances could be things that we take for granted, like parking rules. So where can we park and when? Or bike lanes. Um, is there a city ordinance that bike lanes um, are present in the community and where they're at and what the rules are about using those? There could also be worksite policy. So um, over 25% of us said that's what we thought of were our worksite policies. So things like um, does our workplace allow us flexible time to be physically active and maintain a, a work-life balance? Um, does our health insurance that our employer has chosen have incentives um, through our wellness programs? Policies can also be at the organizational level. So things like um, organizations like churches may have policies on meeting uh, foods that are served at meetings, for example. Or even um, families can have their own formal or informal policies. So things like um, no TV watching during family meals could be a policy. Those may not be in writing, probably not, um, but most children know what their parents' policies are. So um, what we do hear consistently is that policy can be really intimidating to a lot of us. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that when we study policy more, the concept is really less frightening when we understand it better and in some cases understand the process. And we're not necessarily going to discuss the process of policy change today, um, but at least understanding what policy is can hopefully help make it um, less intimidating. And I will give a caution here um, as far as uh, knowing um, where our funding comes from for our positions, that many of us need to be aware when we're looking at policy um, to be very cautious not to engage in anything that um, resembles or is lobbying um, for specific legislation. And there's certainly guidance, for example, from our funding source, CDC, on what we can and cannot do in that area. But at least understanding policy is certainly valuable. So then we move on to the second component being systems. Um, systems, uh, I think, can also sometimes be confusing. So basically looking at how things interact to create a unified whole. So examples of a system can be things like a highway system. So obviously in the state of Iowa we have thousands of miles of roads, and how do they connect? A similar concept in the area of physical activity would be bike trails or as I like to refer to them, running trails. Um, the bike trail system I know in central Iowa is very extensive and is definitely comprised of a lot of different trails that interconnect together as a system. Um, social ne networking systems like Facebook um, are very popular and also very um, connected to the world of cancer would be what the cancer screening system is in the state for like breast, cervical, and colorectal cancers. All of those are examples of systems. The interesting thing about systems, <coughs> excuse me, um, systems uh, are oftentimes in a consistent process of changing. So systems are what help us to implement policies, but they're not policies in and of themselves. But if we look at, uh, for example, even the systems within one organization, an organization may have one policy, but two departments or two uh, managers within the organization may have different systems for how to implement those policies. Um, systems can be simple, so things like reviewing or renewing your driver's license um, is a very simple system. And note, I didn't say that it was fast or easy, but it's a fairly simple system. Or it can be a really complex system, like the um, huge number of systems that operate your car. So it's really a system of systems that make your car run. Or the intricate inner workings of the systems in, your, in our human bodies. Um, so here, it's important to note that uh, policies and systems overlap, but yet they're very different. Um, so a system may adapt to a policy or alter the impact of the policy, even if the policy is written um, very concretely uh, and definitively. Okay. So then when we go on and look at the environment, um, I chose the two pictures on the slide 
because most of us, I think, when we think about the environment, we think about the outdoors, what's around us, when really the definition of environment is much more broad. So it is the circumstances, objects, or conditions by which one is surrounded. So certainly the outdoor environment is a significant part of the broader definition of environment, but it's also much more inclusive. So the environment's what's around us. So we think about um, like a work environment. A farmer has a very different work environment than, for example, um, an insurance broker or a healthcare provider. Um, most certainly them a different environment than myself as a public health cubicle dweller. Um, but we all live in different environments, um, even in the same state, uh, the same community, or the same city block. Um, uh, the environment in my home is probably quite different than the environment, um, well, I know it's quite different than the environment in my next door neighbor's home. Um, they live a very different life than I do, and I probably should not go into details. So the environment can also include, for example, the culture at work. So circumstances or conditions that we, we work within or even within a specific work team. Um, so environment. And in our, the title of the webinar, Policy Systems and Environmental Change, um, change is really obviously a very key word um, in, in the title. So without change, we're not really improving things. And I know that the word change is obviously, um, not obviously, often associated with negative connotations, but the intent for the purpose of policy systems and environmental change is that it's change for the better. So um, we'll look at today then how we change policy systems or the environment um, for the better. So my guess is that many of us on the webinar are wondering why. Why do we focus on policy systems and environmental change? Well, for some of us, the simple answer is because our funders um, are telling us that's what we need to focus on. Um, but more importantly than that, the reason is that working at all levels of change in the socio-ecological model of change are important. They're all valuable, but each one of those levels is different. The benefit of focusing at the policy systems and environmental change level is that it gives us the greatest impact with the largest number of people with the least resources. So basically, it's more efficient. Um, not to say that it's better than uh, working in at the, any of the other levels of change, but it is more efficient. And so depending on the change that we're trying to create, it may be the most effective or the most appropriate. Um, policy systems and environmental change can also be used as an impact looking at health equity. Um, and one of the reasons that it can be impactful there is because it's making equal resources available um, or equal opportunities available to all people. Um, so information uh, straight from um, CDC on uh, some information that they've been using for guidance uh, with many CDC funded programs um, is that improvements in social and physical environments make healthy behaviors easier and more convenient for Americans. Um, a healthier society delivers healthier students to our schools, uh, healthier workers to our businesses and employers, and a healthier population to the healthcare system. Um, these types of interventions support and reinforce healthy choices and healthy behaviors and make it easier for Americans to take charge of their health. And they have a broad reach, um, sustained health impact, and are best buys for public health. And so an important word there also is sustainability, because policy systems and environmental change is oftentimes a very effective way to create sustainability, um, which is becoming more and more important as um, funding decreases and uh, things get more competitive in the work that we do. So the model here that we're looking at is an adapted version of the health impact pyramid and is really a different way of depicting the socio-ecological model. So you can see at the peak of this pyramid is the individual. And at the base of the system is uh, policy systems and environmental change. So it's a, instead of the individual being in the center, in this model, the individual is at the peak. 
Um, so the arrows on the side show that as you move towards working more with individuals, that your efforts will require increasing effort with a smaller reach. And so in many cases, that often um, will connect to a greater cost. And that focusing efforts on system and environmental change will increase your impact and your reach and therefore um, basically give you a greater bang for your buck um, or be more efficient. Um, so neither, again, neither approach is right or wrong. They're just simply different. And it can take working at multiple levels um, to make significant impact in a problem. OK. So oops, the picture didn't show up. There we go. Um, so is this applicable to what we're doing? Does it apply to our cancer or chronic disease prevention work? Well, I would argue that absolutely it does, that policy systems and environmental change can be used in nearly any topic area, including cancer and chronic disease prevention. Um, so Sarah, would you be willing to put up the third poll? Okay. And here, um, I'm simply looking at if any of us are currently working on any policy systems or environmental change efforts personally or professionally. So either professionally at work or personally um, in any um, like private uh, volunteer groups or organizations. OK, it looks like overwhelmingly that most of us are, or all of us are, uh, for the folks that have answered so far. So excellent. All right, so we're going to move into some examples of policy and environmental change. The systems part, I'm not necessarily going to focus on examples, um, but rather the environmental change and policy change. So here, we'll start out by looking at some items um, that are more traditional nutrition and physical activity, environmental change and policy changes. So environmental change um, examples are that bike lanes are in place, um, law enforcement monitors the streets, and usage is widely accepted. Um, so definitely an environmental change in a community. Um, policy, a policy that would uh, connect to that is that a county ordinance requiring all new county roads um, that are built must have a sidewalk or a bike lane. Um, so the policy there is um, something that we'll be looking into the future. And um, the environmental change is what um, is infecting the environment today. Um, and similar concept then for food is community gardens are in place in various neighborhoods. And uh, the policy change is uh, county ordinances limiting food advertisements within 10 blocks. All right. Um, Sarah, if you don't mind, I need to set my headset down for just a moment. I am not feeling well um, okay. for probably about a minute or so. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, this is Rachel from the Iowa Cancer Consortium. I know that we have some community transformation grant um, counties on the webinar. So I was wondering if any of you would be willing to kind of write in and let us know what kind of PSC changes you're making through the grant um, in your community just to kind of give us all on the webinar an idea of what you're up to. So I know we have Chris um, from Ringgold, Anne from Mills, and then uh, Christina from Marion. And I think there might be a few more. So if you want to go ahead and type through there, we can just chat this way. I thought everybody uh, implementing the CTG grant are probably uh, policy systems and environmental change gurus, I think, from what I've heard. So that's really wonderful. And people who aren't familiar with CTG, Rachel, do you want to just give us why they're typing, uh, like a minute overview of <laughs> what CTG is? <laughs> sure. So the Community Transformation Grant, um, it's grants that were given out to different counties. And I can't even remember how many. So maybe some IDPHers on here could let me know. Um, but the focus is on rural counties to make them healthier. And um, a big component of that is through policy systems and environmental change. So um, they're working on some different um, 
strategies related to, I know, smoke-free housing and tobacco. Um, thanks, Victoria, 26 counties. Um, so they're a really great group, um, and I think that was a, another national grant that's very large. So I know Kayla Shipley from the Department of Public Health is working on that. So. Sarah, I am back. I apologize for that. No, hope you're feeling okay. <laughs> And Rachel was just um, asking, um, there are several community transformation grant um, counties represented, and so she was just asking them what are some of the policies um, or PSCs that they're working on. So that's what um, Chris was just writing in, that they're doing worksite wellness as assessments at six of their largest employers, So, um, which sure. is then in Daryl's will work on that. So are you able to continue, or you want to? I am, yes. OK, all right. <laughs> We'll Slightly <laughs> embarrassing, but thank you for working. No, with no. Me. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Okay, so we've gone to the next screen. Um, continuing in um, policy and environmental change examples in the nutrition physical activity arena, um, looking specifically at work sites, um, a work site could, uh, in the environmental change area, look at a, um, conducting NEMS V assessments. And if you're not familiar with NEMS V assessments, they are assessing vending machines for the percentage of healthy offerings um, or less unhealthy offerings, maybe another way of putting that, that are available in those vending machines. So, and making changes to those offerings, um, providing that 30% um, or up to 30% or more um, would meet the definitions of healthy criteria. And so in that environmental change, it would be just simply making um, healthier options available uh, to folks that use those vending machines, whether that be in a work site, um, in a public building, um, at a rest stop, wherever you might tap into uh, food through a vending machine. Um, a similar policy connected to food availability in the work site may be that a work site would develop guidelines for healthy meetings requiring that all food um, provided at com uh, company-sponsored meetings include healthy choices um, or be completely healthy choices as an example of a policy. Um, for activity, a work site could also conduct a stairwell audit to ensure that stairwells are well lit, that they're safe, that they're inviting, that employees would want to use that stairwell um, because it feels like a comfortable place to be. And the CDC Stairwell uh, to Better Health um, challenge, which can be found on the CDC website, um, signs could be hung promoting stairwell usage. Um, in a policy change uh, consideration, a work site could implement a flex time practice allowing employees to adjust their regular work hours. So maybe um, come in a little bit later uh, to be physically active. Um, after they drop their kids off at school um, or walk their kids to school, even better yet, um, and come in a little later or expand their lunch time a little longer, whatever that may be, flex their work time schedule in order to um, increase the opportunity for physical activity in their day. And the third slide of environmental change and policy change examples are ones that might even be a little more directly uh, connected specifically to um, work in the cancer field. And many of these have, um, actually come from Iowa Cancer Consortium uh, mini-grant uh, um, opportunities or projects. So in the, in the environmental change category, um, promoting the use of sunscreen at uh, minor league uh, baseball fields. And the policy connected to that could be um, Iowa's minor league baseball fields providing the sunscreen. And so simply with the ball fields um, having a practice uh, providing the sunscreen, they've implemented a policy um, that also then directly connects to changing the environment in, in, those, um, uh, in the ballparks. And so practice then that could accompany that would be encouraging um, uh, guests at the ball fields to use the sunscreen, um, uh, having the mascot, which I understand the mascot's name there is Mr. Shucks. If Mr. Shucks is obviously um, promoting the use of sunscreen there and promoting uh, the use of sunscreen to, to guests. So that policy and change and that environmental change really work hand in hand. Um, another example 
is through the Body and Soul program, which several of you are probably familiar with, that churches could use the Body and Soul program um, to put in uh, community gardens, either on their church property or nearby in the community. And by then uh, putting in that community garden, really change their environment to have more um, uh, fruits and vegetables uh, produced in their neighborhood and either using that in their church programming or perhaps using it as a church mission opportunity um, to share with low-income uh, individuals living in the neighborhood. Um, so using it as an outreach opportunity as well. And then a policy opportunity to connect to that is that perhaps that church might um, look at a policy on things like discouraging fried foods, maybe at potlucks, maybe that's been a big tradition in that church, or a flip side of that of maybe encouraging um, uh, more people to bring things like fresh fruits and vegetables to church functions. Um, and then a, a work site uh, example of environmental change may be to have worksite human resources and management encourage the use of quitline. So um, I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with the quitline resource. It's available throughout the state uh, free of charge. And so simply by having the environmental change of having um, human resources or supervisors and managers um, in a worksite encouraging their employees to tap into that resource could certainly have a big impact. Uh, similarly, at the policy change level, perhaps a local school looking into um, implementing a radon testing policy, um, whether that be an individual school or um, uh, an entire school district, that that uh, policy could certainly be insightful. Um, and if results were less than positive, um, mitigate so that the environment is changed for the better. Um, similarly, I guess with radon, um, understanding that um, some communities are also either looking at or have implemented policy on um, radon mitigation systems in new construction. So certainly that is a policy that would create environment change uh, environmental change going forward for all new construction and uh, certainly increase uh, safety and reduce risk uh, across the state. So, um, so those are several examples. I'm sure that uh, many of you have a lot of wonderful examples that could be added to that list of things that, that you're doing through your professional work um, or through uh, volunteer work that you're involved in. Um, one thing that um, uh, we really wanted to encourage, though, when we look at policy systems and environmental change is that the, the number of possibilities are really endless. And that at least one thing that we're really being encouraged to do here, and I believe um, uh, ICC is as well, is to really look at what the evidence base is when we consider policy systems or environmental change. Um, so knowing that our efforts um, are grounded in science, that it is evidence-based, and that we have um, a higher likelihood of um, that work being uh, successful and having the positive impact that the positive change impact that we are um, hoping for and planning for. And so um, if you're not already familiar with them, uh, a short list of resources that may have uh, some of the evidence base that you might be looking for um, certainly could be things like the Cancer Control Planet, um, which Rachel and Sarah um, gladly shared with me as uh, one of the, the outstanding um, cancer resources. So certainly that it includes things like links to um, state plans in uh, states across the country, so most definitely including um, a link to the Iowa Cancer Plan, which of course is the best one in the country, and we all want to use that. Um, also links to things like the Community Guide, um, evidence-based strategies um, uh, that include policy systems and environmental change strategies. The um, 
uh, Community Guide and Iowa Cancer Plan, of course, are listed. Um, something you may or may not be familiar with is the, something called the Recommended Community Strategies and Measures. And that is a document that's been prepared um, by CDC, and it's specifically in the areas of nutrition and physical activity. So that would be, um, from, from my angle, um, a phenomenal uh, resource uh, for nutrition and physical activity work that, um, of course, uh, also has an impact in preventing cancer. Um, additionally, uh, the Iowans Fit for Life State Plan has a lot of connections with the Iowa Cancer Plan. And then beyond that, there are a lot of resources, of course, on CDC's website. So moving forward, um, the, there are a lot of different ways that the policy uh, systems and environmental change concepts can be folded into our work. Um, so some general concepts to consider, though, knowing that of uh, the 21 of us that are on um, online on the webinar today really come from many different walks of life. We do very different types of work, and our the type of work we do is very different. Um, the way that we can go about that is very different. So um, considerations are really going to vary <clears throat> uh, for for each of us. So knowing what we can and cannot do is very important. And the reason that I bring that up um, uh, for a personal example is, of course, with uh, the Department of Public Health, being aware of what we cannot do is very important. So working, we can certainly work at the policy systems and environmental change level, but we need to be very careful um, when it comes to policy work that it's not getting into the arena of lobbying. Um, because certainly receiving uh, federal funds, um, that is not something we're permitted to do. And um, I recognize that the things that you can or cannot do are going to be very different uh, depending on the organization you work for, um, how you're paid, uh, volunteer, things that you're involved in. Uh, may be very different what your organization supports or does not support you working in. Um, secondly, then knowing what your partners knowing who your partners are and what they can or cannot do. Um, so certainly, um, you know, a, a very obvious partner with, for example, the American Cancer Society, they may be able to do things um, that the department um, cannot do. Certainly, um, Iowa Cancer Consortium um, can do many things, but there are some things they probably cannot do. So knowing who your partners are and what they can and cannot do, and then leveraging that with each other. Um, knowing what the evidence base is, we've talked about that some as well, and knowing where to tap into those resources. Um, specifically when looking at policy, or even really uh, any of the category systems, environmental change, knowing who the decision makers are, who can help make those things happen. Um, so many of us said that the first thing we thought of with policy was legislation. Um, whether that be federal or state. So knowing who the decision makers are, if we're looking at wanting to um, do something like a city ordinance for bike lanes or community gardens, well, who, who makes that decision? Who do we need to talk to? Um, and then knowing how to best communicate uh, the need and a potential solution that we are proposing. Um, so that is, that's a very short um, uh, discussion of moving it forward, uh, but they're um, moving beyond just the academic knowledge of what policy systems and environmental change is. Those are just some basic considerations of how to apply that information um, and, and move forward with it. And I don't see the summary slide in here, so I must have omitted that somehow. Um, but in summary, uh, I guess what I'd like to challenge each of us to do is really to look at policy systems and environmental change and how that may already be a part of our work and where it's a part of our work where maybe we um, didn't realize it was in our work and we've been doing that but haven't been calling it policy systems or environmental change. Um, so recognizing where we are already doing that. Um, to really strongly consider if, if uh, any of us have been intimidated 
uh, by policy specifically or even in systems and environmental change work to um, really remember that it can be simpler uh, and more straightforward than maybe we'd anticipated, that it isn't impossible. We don't always have to rely, for example, on um, uh, folks that are paid just to do that, to focus on it, that we can be involved in that as well. Um, to check out our policy systems environmental change resources and the evidence base, um, know what we can and cannot do. Um, so to consider those limitations and also know who we can partner with if there are things we cannot specifically do. Um, so a final poll question. It looks like uh, Sarah has the poll question up. If we could open that up. Um, what ideas do you have for policy systems or environmental strategies in your work? Again, whether that be professional work or um, private uh, through volunteering, what have you. Um, and here, it's not actually a poll question, but if you could actually type in your answer. And Sarah, I believe that will show up in the chat box, won't it? Um, it will actually just show up right below. They can either type it in the chat box or in the um, actual poll question. They're both open-ended. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So what are some examples um, or ideas that you have uh, for things that you're already doing or things that um, you could do uh, through your professional or uh, private work that could be in the areas of policy systems or environmental change? Looks like we have some ideas coming in. Box a little bigger. <laughs> Great, that's helpful. Thank you. All right, so good example. So we've got, um, let's see, making sunscreen a staple during the Ragbri route next summer. Um, definitely a good idea. Making casinos smoke-free um, definitely would fall into that category. Making all new construction in Iowa radon resistant, um, excellent idea. Bike lanes on all highway construction, or at least wide shoulders with no rumble strips, um, excellent idea. Uh, tobacco ban on all county trail systems, making walking and biking in communities easier and more attractive than driving. Um, local public health agency has provided sunscreen to local swimming pools each summer. Excellent. Those are all great examples. So it sounds like maybe a combination of things that are already taking place, um, as well as ideas of things um, that would definitely fit in policy systems and environmental change. Um, categories going forward. So with that, um, I, first of all, I'd like to apologize for needing to step away for um, a couple of moments. But I um, uh, appreciate your attention. And Sarah, I think we have the opportunity for um, some questions, if those uh, would come through the chat system. Yes, if they want to go ahead and put questions in the chat box, or if you continue to think of other ideas for policy systems, environmental change, you can put those in the um, the polling <laughs> box, so hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, questions can go up in the chat box and Dennis can answer them. Um, again, why I'm giving everybody a chance to type their questions. This session, again, will be recorded and we'll have the um, recording and the PowerPoint up on Cancer Iowa um, and hope that everyone will um, look at the future sessions. We have sessions planned out through June. Um, so please register for those and then um, after we're done with a question and answer session, I'm going to pop up the um, evaluation should show up on your screen. You can fill it out that way or I'll send it an email um, within a few minutes of the end of the webinar and you can um, complete it that way. We really appreciate it if you do the webinar. Oh. <laughs> it looks like Chris really likes the idea of uh, making walking and biking easier than driving. <laughs> Uh, Chris is a very consistent advocate of active transportation. <laughs> well, in my community, that would mean asking everyone to stop driving in the bike lane, <laughs> the one bike lane that we have. <laughs> so. That would be a good start. It would. <laughs> so. I, I once um, uh, met my pastor's wife driving down the bike lane in front of my house. Oh, and, my God. Um, so had a fun conversation with her the next Sunday at church about, um, um, you know that really narrow lane you were driving in? It's a bike lane. <laughs> so. Rachel has a question for you. 
think policy systems environmental change is a strategy that is here to stay. Well, I certainly hope so, Rachel. Um, I think that at least uh, in the time that I've been with the department, that that continues to be a stronger and a stronger emphasis. Um, that at least our funding us or CDC is emphasizing, and certainly. Um, we live in interesting times, um, politically and financially. And so some of the, the ways that we're looking at policy systems and environmental change are um, evolving. Um, but I do think that the, the emphasis on policy systems and environmental change is a strategy that's here to stay, um, mainly from that perspective of efficiency and affecting, impacting a larger number of people with fewer resources. Um, more efficiently. And we list, um, you listed some resources, Dennis, for, um, for where to find best practices on policy systems, environmental change. But in my work, I know that it's not usually one organization or one person that makes a change. Do you know any resources for kind of the coalition building strategies? Because that's almost as important as your issue <laughs> is how to get everybody on the same page um, on one particular issue. Is there anything that you guys have used or, again, know of a resource that would kind of help someone avoid the pitfalls of um, that can sometimes go along with collaboration or coalition building? Oh, wow. That's a large question. Um, I mean, there are definitely a lot of resources on coalition building. Um, I think uh, I might answer that a little bit differently than the specific question you asked. and maybe focus on um, the way that we go about um, starting our coalition work. And one of the things that immediately came to mind for me is that a lot of our, our groups or our coalitions are very um, focused on what the problems are and how to fix them. And another approach um, that we've been trying to promote is an asset-based um, approach to beginning to work on an issue. And a really great tool um, that coalitions can use to begin that process is something called asset mapping. And even just through a simple Google search, you can find asset mapping. Um, we have a specific asset mapping resource for nutrition and physical activity that's on the Iowans Fit for Life website. Um, but the concept is easily adaptable to pretty much any um, community issue that a group is wanting to work on. But the approach is just exactly what it says. It's asset-based. So it's focusing on what a community already has as strengths and building on that then to help fill in gaps and make that community even stronger um, rather than the opposite approach, which is what's our problem? How do we fix it? Which kind of starts things out oftentimes in a, um, a more negative mode. So starting out on a positive asset-based mode um, can be very helpful. Um, and then coalition building. I know that CDC has resources on coalition building. Um, and I do not have those resources off of the top of my head. Um, but I do know that they have uh, coalition building um, information uh, on their website as well. Oh, that's great. Actually, I'd never heard of asset mapping for like a, an issue or if a group is working on something. I've heard it at, at the individual level of like kind of strengths-based perspective, but that's great. I will definitely look into that. So um, it looks like Rachel and Victoria both put up um, some another resources, um, the websites that are listed there. Thank you. And I don't see any Thanks. other questions listed, so I don't know since if there's any left comments you want to leave the group with. But otherwise, I think that we are wrapping up for this afternoon. I would just clarify, I guess, Victoria, are you referencing the, the resource that you put up? Is that a coalition building or coalition support resource that's listed? See how fast the typer, Victoria. <laughs> oh, OK, great. Thank you. I appreciate you listing that. OK, I don't see anyone else typing, so. I just want to really thank you, Dennis, for um, taking your time to share your resources with us on policy systems environmental change. And Dennis has his contact information up on the last slide. And thank everyone for spending um, part of their afternoon with us. And um, wish you all luck with your policy systems environmental change um, initiatives. So thank you. <laughs>